Uh, okay, cool. Um, then, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're right on time. And we have 47 people watching, so nice. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Patrick Stewart, and I am the uh, founder, chief editor of the Dallas Online. Um, with me today is um, full name Nathaniel Welch, but but Nathan. Uh, Nathan, say hi. Hello. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, we also have Nani, who's uh, also one of our editors with Nathan. Nani, say hi. Hello, everybody. Cool. Uh, and what we're going to do today is we want to talk about uh, the publication. We want to talk about what our purpose is, uh, why it was made, how it was made. Uh, and then we're going to talk about what it means to write uh, personally, write philosophically, uh, write about your spiritual beliefs and your religion, maybe. Um, that's not easy to do. Uh, it's something that, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get into. I have a couple of insights that I wanted to share with you uh, to help you guys out. So uh, first and foremost, uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I am in Fort Worth, Texas. I've grown up here my whole life. Um, I'm 40 years old. Um, and let's see, an interesting thing about myself, uh, I play drums and piano. I've been, a, I've been a Dallas for uh, about four or five years now. Uh, Nathan. Yeah, so I'm in uh, Ohio, Northeast Ohio, and uh, I also play drums and piano, but a bunch of other stuff too. I was a music major. Um, I, I also take care of my brother who's disabled full time, so that's what I do. And I've been interested in Taoism for as long as I can remember. Um, which is, you know, I mean, I just turned 37, so it's probably been at least 20 years, maybe a little bit more. So, yeah. Nani. Well, I am Brazilian, but I live in Ireland. Uh, it's been almost a decade I've been living here. And, yeah, my big thing is I have two little girls, and I really want them to have a world that is hopefully better than the one we're living in, but at least as good as. So I, I usually like to write about sustainability. I'm really big into it. And it's something that I'm really passionate about. So, Cool. Thanks, guys. Um, so now what we'll do uh, is I'm going to give you guys an overview of kind of why the Dallas Online exists uh, and how it came about. Because I think it's kind of an interesting story that I wanted to share. Um, a couple of years ago, I wound up with a, a cancer scare. Uh, obviously, it, hope, luckily, it wasn't cancer, so that's super cool, but we thought it was. You know, when you think you're, you know, maybe dying, uh, you kind of go through some things. And uh, what it kind of pointed out to me was, um, you know, I wanted to do something a little different. Uh, and I had a lot of stories to tell. Uh, about my philosophy on life, about my spirituality, um, about my religious thoughts. And uh, I had blogged off and on for almost a decade. Uh, I'd been on a Medium. I had a Medium account back in 2015. Uh, so the company was brand new. Um, I had seen people kind of come and go back then. Uh, I had one article and then just vanished from Medium for like eight years and then got back on um, and I started looking around for something like a publication that fit kind of what I wanted to write about. And there just wasn't really anything there, or at least something I could find. Um, I wanted something that was open to all religious backgrounds or all philosophical backgrounds. And I found publications that were primarily Christian, or I found one that were, you know, self-improvement and that kind of fit it, but like not really. Um, and I discovered something. This is kind of a good life lesson is that if you desire something, like if you go out into the world and you, you can't find what you're looking for. And for me on medium, medium been around for almost 10 years. If you don't see what you want on there, like nobody is going to come make it for you, right? Like you have to be the one sometimes to go do it. And on one hand, that sucks because it's a lot of work. Like running a publication is a lot of work, but the, the reward for the people who will write for you, the people who read 
Um, you know, as soon as those comments started coming in that how much they appreciated either one of my articles or Donnie's articles or Nathan's articles or any of the hundreds of other articles we have on there now, um, that made it super worth it. Right. Um, so yeah, so, so the Dow, the words of the Dallas online really started as my kind of my own personal brand that I was writing under on my own website. Um, and I honestly, this was back in February. I didn't think anyone would care, uh, that I made this publication. I just did it because I thought that's what the algorithm wanted, uh, only to have people like Nathan and Nani show up a few weeks later and be like, Hey, I want to write. And like, what do you mean you want to write for this thing? <laughs> like some people don't even know what Taoism is. Like most people don't. Um, but that's, that's the cool part is you get to teach them. And you guys uh, have helped in so many ways to to push um, the openness that medium provides and that our writing can provide to others. Uh, so, Nani, can you can you go through just for a second how uh, I know we were talking about it yesterday how you yeah. came to be on this crazy so, journey? I think I started reading your articles like from the very 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 beginning because i remember one of the articles that you wrote about a boy finding about taoism and i think that was one of the first articles so i was there commenting and following you and the publication as well as it was growing but i don't write on taoism i was very happy to read and learn about it and then at one stage, you I think I shared one of my articles on Discord on veganism. And you said, oh, we would love to publish things about veganism. And I was so happy to find a home for my articles on sustainability. And veganism is part of that. Um, so I'm very happy that I found TTO for my articles. And then a few months later... I became an editor to help out, hopefully, <laughs> because I can see how much work you put into it. And how now that I'm an editor, I'm even more flabbergasted. There's a lot of work. <laughs> but yeah, so that's it. Yeah, I, I remember, Nani, I think you were editor number like three. And Nathan, I think you were number one. You were the first other editor I brought on. And now we have six editors and we're still just like 20 articles deep every day. I uh, just can never, we can never push these articles out and get them um, up fast enough. Uh, but Nathan, I don't mean to step on your toes or tell your story, but uh, how did you, how did you get involved with this? Yeah. I mean, I joined Mastodon, which is how I found you um, like December of last year. I mean, I had already deleted Twitter and all that nonsense so, a long time ago, but had at that moment felt like, I really wanted to start, like I had been ruminating on all these things for a long time. And I finally had felt like maybe it, maybe I want to start sharing them with people. And I would really like to find other people who maybe are interested in these same things. You know, Taoism, yes, but I also do a lot of like nature writing. I'm interested in Henry David Thoreau and, and uh, indigenous knowledge and writing. So like those things are always sort of fused together for me as one thing. And I, so I got joined Mastodon and thought like, I don't know, maybe we'll see what's, see what this is like, see if I, there's anybody on there. Very early on, I found you posting about Dallas and I'm like, oh, this is perfect. And he's like, oh yeah, you, you know, we're going to start a discord and start writing for medium. I'm like, okay, this is the, this is the sign I needed the extra little push to actually start writing things. Um, so it's been great to, to have the opportunity to do that, have the, the reason to do that otherwise i would probably still just be sitting here thinking about all these things and not doing anything and not sharing anything so it's really given me an opportunity to put the pen to the paper and to take the leap and actually like put it out there for people and i've been really surprised to see how many people resonate with stuff that i just thought was you know all in my head just stuff i'm thinking and feeling um, so it's been really really great to, to have that you know come into fruition yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so I see a couple of questions in the chat uh, that I'm going to kind of rope into the next section here. Uh, I want to talk about um, not only how writing philosophically or writing your deep personal thoughts um, works, but how 
you can incorporate it into kind of really anything, right? Um, and I, there was a question actually about it too uh, by Yasmin. Uh, so I'll, I'll make sure to kind of weave that into the answer here. And thanks for you guys, everyone in the chat. Uh, that's super cool being like, oh my gosh, it's your old voices and faces. That's really cool. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, I just want to make, I'm seeing those. So keep them coming. If I don't, if I don't say anything, I, I am seeing them. Um, okay, so it's it's not easy to write your emotions. Uh, it can be scary. It can be um, emotional, right? I mean, I've gotten angry while writing uh, past stories, especially about my father, uh, my family, um, my relationship with Christianity, which is its own like six part series nowadays. Um, and it's it's always nerve wracking to, to put something very personal on a website, right? Because Medium is a free platform. It's open. It's not like you have your personal blog that nobody knows about. And it's like your little secret and you can put anything you want to on there. This is like a huge website, right? And like everybody knows about Medium in some way, shape or form. Um, in fact, funny story, my mom discovered my Medium last week and was like, what's this? And like sent me a screenshot <laughs> Um, so no, I get it. Like it's scary. Right. And, but you just got to go for it. Right. Um, if you have a calling, if you feel strongly enough about wanting to be a writer, people want to know who you are. That's how they connect with your work. Um, now you could be a great, um, fiction writer and you can be, and that's, that's amazing, but I'm, I'm not a fiction writer. Um, I've written one fiction story the entire six months I've been on Medium, and I thought it was cool, and it was like one and done. I went there, and I'm good. Um, but yeah, it, it if you want to write and really connect on that level, it's got to be about something you know a ton about, and that's yourself. Nobody knows you better than you, Right. So if you want to connect emotionally, if you want to start writing about your beliefs, it, it needs to come from within and be about whatever is on the inside. And don't be afraid, right? Don't be scared to put it out there because crazy as it may sound, you're not unique to some degree. I mean, yes, you are, but what you're going through, there is somebody out there who can relate to that, whether it's uh, a, a religion you've been shunned by, a philosophy that makes you angry because you don't agree with it. Everyone has been there. Everybody watches the news sometimes. We've all got friends that have beliefs that we are just like, oh my God, how can you believe that, right? We've all been there. Um, so it, yeah, it needs to be about you. It needs to be about your soul. Uh, you know, there's, there's this crazy scene in Sister Act 2 that I know this is going to date me, uh, if, for those who don't know, Sister Act 2 is a movie in the 90s where Whoopi Goldberg plays a nun who, like, teaches a bunch of people how to, how to sing, right? Makes them a choir. It's like inner city school. And one of the, the women played by Lauren Hill, a very young Lauren Hill, is on the bus and she's like, I can't go. My mom won't let me. And Whoopi Goldberg is like, look, if you wake up every morning and you want to be a singer, you're a singer. And so I, that hit me philosophically at like 10 years old, that if I wake up every day and I want to be a writer, I'm a writer. If I wake up every day and the first thing I think about is I want to help people, then go help people. And that's why I'm a customer support manager at my job, right? Like I help people all day, whether it's philosophically, spiritually, with the refunds, right? Like login <laughs> problems. Look, and I know they're different, but but you see my point, right? If you don't be afraid, like if you want to write spiritually, it has to come from within. And don't let your fear stop you from doing what you're supposed to be doing, right? Um, Can I just add to that? Um, yeah. I, I think something that is... Because from my perspective, this is my writing has been very personal in nature. 
intentionally because it was only ever intended to be for me. You know, like I, I didn't really intend to share it. Um, and I think that that is really an important component that I'm writing to my situation specifically and trying to voice my feelings, my thoughts, um, rather than trying to make it very general and broad to like appeal to a lot of people. I think that sometimes when I have done that, it loses something. And some, strangely, less people I think can relate to it the more I try to make it relatable. Whereas the more I make it personal and unique to exactly what I'm thinking and feeling, like you're saying, then surprisingly, somehow there are tons of people who relate, uh, which is a strange thing, but I think important when writing about, you know, these kinds of things. Yeah, the I agree. My articles that I think nobody is going to care about, like how on earth are they going to relate to this story about me being 10, this very specific day in my life 30 years ago. Those are the ones where comments come back and they say, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, like that happened to me or something very similar happened to me. And, you know, now, and they, now they comment all the time, you know, those are the people who stick around. Like those are the people who get into your community and really connect and, and reach out. Um, so yeah, the, it, it, it seems counterintuitive, but the more specific it is to you, the more people will relate to those stories. Like people know if you're genuine. I mean, yeah, can, I was going like, to say that it gives yeah. authenticity to your writing. When you try to be general, you kind of bury who you are. And, and then people are like, well, everybody, anybody could have written that. So, yeah, OK, it's all right. But when it's you writing your experience, there's more emotion there. There's more authenticity. And people are like, oh, is that how you went through? Even if the person hasn't gone through something similar, they will feel what you went, went through. They might relate or they might have something else that they want to share with you. And that's how you start building your community. You know, you start gathering readers that they want to come back and they want to hear more from you because they know it's you and not some random thought on the Internet. Yeah. And I wanted to also talk about, you know, when a lot of people hear, you know, writing about philosophy or spiritualism, they always think like self-help. Like you walk into the library and there's just like a million self-help books Every, there's a whole corner in my local library that is just self-help books. And I just ignore them. As soon as I walk in, I just don't go over there at all. Um, and if it works for you and you love self-help books, man, please keep reading them. Um, but if you want to write that way, it doesn't have to be always self-help, right? Like you don't have to be the self-help guru to go write online. In fact, my, I told my brother a couple of months ago that I was starting to write online and I had this publication and people were starting to ask to write with me and I, how weird I thought that was, but cool at the same time. He was like, oh, you're a self-help guru. Like You're like one of those guys. And I was like, no, no, that's not, that's not, my, that's not the purpose, right? Like I'm not going to write an article that says, you know, five steps to enlightenment. Or, you know, 10 steps to curing your anxiety in life. Like, I'll write about anxiety all day long, but I, I can't, I'm not going to promise I can fix it for you, right? I can tell you, and that's where it goes back to writing about you, and then people relate to it, right? Like, I can tell you what I've done to, to help with anxiety in my life, or uh, I have tinnitus, which is a ring in my ears, uh, where it doesn't go away. Um, you know, kind of how I cope with that and some steps I've taken or how I practice breathing, those things I can do. Uh, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to come out and tell you that it's going to solve all your problems. Right. So if you feel that you have knowledge that you want to share with someone and that it can help them overcome something, absolutely write that down. Uh, but, but you, you don't have to be that savior of humanity just to write um you can just tell your story and be authentic and be emotionally vulnerable through your writing and people will 100 percent 
connect with you and they will flock to your writing, which is, was what we've seen. I mean, when I started, you know, the Taoist online, it was, it was me. And then it was like Nathan and Nani. And I found the old post uh, where it was like, welcome to the team. And it was every writer we had. And it was <laughs> seven people. That was it. It was seven people. It was week two of having the publication online. And then last month, I pulled the same list. It was over 500 writers. Um, so, and I, I, I hate to kind of use numbers as a, a, an example because it sounds like bragging. But if, if you are there for people, if you write about what you believe, they will come. Like they will, they will read it and, and, and it can help people. Um, sharing your knowledge is a form of immortality online. It just is. I mean, the internet and the web and now it's, you know, decentralized social networks. Um, it's there forever unless like World War III happens. But if you put something online, make it worth it, right? Like make it something that's going to outlive you because it is. And in 50 years, someone's going to come back and, and find your article and you're not going to be there to answer comments or questions. Like, so anything you put online, whatever story you have to tell, make it a good one, right? Make it something that, that people are going to want to see and people are going to connect with for years to come. Okay. So with that being said, uh, we've got about seven minutes left. Um, I want to go through some questions we've been receiving. Um, so I'm going to scroll backwards here. Uh, Yasmin said, I sometimes feel like deep content is mainly only in blogs areas, though. And it makes me feel sad uh, that more popular conversations and articles aren't deep in the same way. Um, do you have thoughts or reflections? Yeah, I mean... Sometimes you just want to write about business. Sometimes you want to write about food and that's okay. Like, you know, should, can people open up a little bit more? Sure. Uh, do they have to? No, I don't think they have to. Sometimes you just want to have fun. Sometimes you want to write about that fun vacation you had or the walk you took or the, the time the dog like messed up your living room, right? Who knows? Whatever you want to write about. Um, but yeah, I think more people should open up. I think we're entering into a, a time in our culture in several countries where people maybe need to start talking a little bit more. And maybe if we explained ourselves a little bit better, maybe maybe we'd get along a little bit easier, right? Um, if we weren't so scared or ashamed of who we were um, sometimes, then I think that would that would go a little bit better. I hope that answers your question. Uh, what is the one thought on Taoism which you would like to share with persons unknown to the concept? Oh, wow. Um, oh, geez. So I get a lot of questions about Taoism where they're like, well, isn't this like contradictory where you're online and sharing Taoism? And doesn't Taoism really teach to like not do that? I'm like, well, kind of. <laughs> I, the irony is not lost on me. Um, so for those who don't know, Taoism is about, about a 2,500-year-old uh, Chinese um, religion. Sometimes it's split off into just a philosophy, but it's, it's a religion for sure. Um, it started out that way anyway. Um, if I had to express one concept, I would say Taoism teaches you to be who you are. And if you're the type of person who just feels like they want to sit there in their house and not communicate, uh, then cool, then do it. If you're the type of person who wants to go online and share a 30-minute session about writing philosophically, go do it. Um, Taoism teaches to be authentic to your nature. And some a lot of times that means not uh, imposing your beliefs on other people. Um, you know, don't go door to door and knock on strangers' doors and try and convert them to be a Taoist. That's just not how Taoism is really meant to, to be taught. Uh, but if you could ask the question, absolutely answer it. 
right? Be open, be honest, be truthful. Um, if people see you are honest and truthful and open, they will come. They will, they will ask you questions for sure because people recognize authenticity. They recognize someone who is talking from their soul. Um, and that's, that's what I would, yeah, that's the concept I would like to share. Nathan, any thoughts on yeah. that? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to take what you said and then twist it a little bit because that's the Taoist way. Uh, so be true to your nature. But the, the one thing I would say is that your nature is unfixed and constantly transforming. And so there isn't any one particular way and there isn't any one particular you even. So be true to your nature, but also recognize that that nature is constantly changing and constantly transforming. And there are multiple ways of being and doing and uh, existing in the world. Yes. That is awesome. That's so awesome. I agree. Um, let's see. Other questions. No sound. There is sound, uh, actually. So I, I hope you get your audio. I hope the audio works. Um, is Taoism and Zen the same thing? Oh, man. Okay. So history lesson. Um, Zen. Let me, I hope I am correct in this. But the, the story I've learned is that Taoism starts in China and then China and India basically hit this kind of midpoint where the knowledge started to overlap. And then that knowledge went over to Japan and through this kind of long merging of systematic beliefs where you get Buddhism and Taoism and Confucianism and you get all these little bits and pieces eventually you end up in Japan with Zen Buddhism or just Zen. Um, so yes, there are, and you're going to find concepts of Taoism inside everything. It's so old and uh, it's very philosophically leaning. When you go back to like the original text, the Tao Te Ching um, or Zhuangzi, uh, it's, it's very like open to interpretation so other religions that have come afterwards uh, will incorporate some of these ideas, maybe not directly. Like, I don't think they read the Tao Te Ching and went, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal this, right? And now we're going to call ourselves Christianity or, or whatever. But I, I think those, those concepts were already there in people's nature. And so you wind up with all these connections kind of flowing throughout the ancient world. Um, you can find... Uh, commonalities in Stoicism, in Confucianism, uh, in Christianity, especially uh, with a lot of Jesus's teachings about how to treat one another. Uh, it's very similar. Christian Taoism is a, a very, very big, uh, you can find books on it all over the place. So, so yeah, that's kind of the relationship of Zen and how Taoism kind of spreads itself uh, throughout not only the ancient world, but the modern world as well. Yeah, just just um, a, real quick, that that uh, nascent form of Zen Buddhism in China was called Chan Buddhism, C H A N. Yeah. So, and that's sort of what was um, imported or exported into to Japan. So, if you, you C H A N Buddhism, look that up, and you'll find exactly what Patrick was talking about. Uh, one more question. Um, I want this is a great one. Tell me if you encounter writer block just to get started. How do you transcend walking your music? Oh, God. I don't like dirt. Like, I know that's weird to be a Taoist and try and be more connected with nature and then really not enjoy going outside. But I don't like getting dirty. And it's 108 degrees outside. So, no, I don't walk. Um, I listen to music. Yeah, you're spot on. I have been a music lover my whole life. Uh, I, I used to get worried that maybe I, like, was hearing music differently than people. And like, I don't know, it was strange. Um, but yeah, I listened to a lot of, I was an emo kid. Sorry, I just was. Uh, when I was a teenager. Um, so yeah, I definitely listen to music. Uh, when the, the when I do meditate, or I think, especially now because of the tinnitus, um, I, I typically want to try and drown that out uh, to, to really gather my thoughts. Um, I got, when I get writer's block, uh, I really, I think about my past. Like I'm 40. So there are 
hundreds of stories there, right? Like just pick one and write about it. And I know we spoke about this earlier, but even the stories that you think nobody is going to relate to, those are the stories people want to hear, right? Those are the unique, personal, emotional, spiritual things that people are like, yeah, my God, like, this is it. Like, oh my, like, how can you possibly be in another country and feel the same thing I feel? Like, those are it. Those are the stories. Um, and yeah, it's hard. It's it's not easy to sit there at a white page and just think, and you got nothing comes out, right? We've all been there. Um, so yeah, th those are it. The stories are there. Whether it's a song, find inspiration in anything, in the sunshine outside, in your dog sleeping on the floor, uh, doing the dishes is my favorite time to think because I'm doing, I'm just doing the dishes. So all that work and whatever the kids got going on, nope, I'm just doing the dishes. This is it. This is my meditation in half an hour right here. Um, that's, that's, that's the way I do it. I know that's really unique. Uh, probably nobody, I don't know if anyone enjoys doing the dishes. I do because I can, I can clear my head doing it. So that's how I get around Roger's block. And that's how I get started. Um, we're over time. If you guys want to take off, absolutely take off, um, go enjoy other sessions. Uh, I, I hope you enjoyed listening to us just ramble for half an hour. I had an outline, but most of this is improv. So maybe that speaks to Taoism, <laughs> right? Maybe that's the most Taoist thing we could have done is just gotten on this call and shot the breeze for half an hour. Um, but yeah, we, we do have a website, uh, the DaoistOnline.org. Uh, we are on like every social media channel for better or for worse. Um, so check that out. Uh, Flipboard, Mastodon, uh, Twitter slash X, whatever you guys want to call it nowadays. I'm on there too. Um, LinkedIn, we're on there. Uh, so yeah, definitely check that out. We are wearing our own t-shirts because we thought it would be fun a couple of months ago just for a few of us. And it turns out people buy that, you know, that's weird, but it's cool at the same time. Uh, I Everything that is used for merch, uh, I tip the writers. Uh, I tip our editors. So it's not like I'm just sitting on a hoard. Uh, I, I do absolutely go back and give it out to the people who are working really hard to make sure that this uh, this goes forward. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, stick around. Medium day is really long. There's a bunch of really cool people who are speaking. I know several of them um, from either the, the Boost nomination program or just from social media channels. They're great writers. They're very, very helpful, very kind people. Um, so please stick around. I hope you guys enjoy your day. Bye. Bye, everybody. See you later. <laughs>